Alright everybody, today's video will be talking about biophysical profiles. Now I'm just going to cover the bare bones, but it should be enough information to, uh, to give you a, a good clinical approach to the biophysical profile. So to begin, let's talk about what it is. Now it's going to be a series of tests, part non-stress tests, part ultrasound, to use uh, to determine the acid base status of the fetus, to see if its overall well-being is acceptable or not. So like I said, you have the non-stress test portion, which I have a video on, and then the ultrasound testing portion, which will give us our other four parameters. So in total, we have five parameters that we're going to be measuring. Uh, there will be a score interpretation that we'll need to use. We'll have a value assigned to each test. So I said there's five components. Um, each component will be given up to two points. So our score will be between zero and 10. And the test may take up to 30 minutes for a normal test or even more for an abnormal test. So I threw together a quick flow chart. Um, typically start with the non-stress test. Um, that's indicated first. And if the non-stress test is non-reactive, meaning there's less than two Actually, I have that in a little bit. I'll hold off, uh, hold off on that. But if it's non-reactive, then uh, a biophysical profile is probably recommended uh, for further evaluation. However, if the non-stress test is reactive, uh, you know that's always a good sign of fetal well-being and the acid-base status may be normal. However, depending on the risk factors and the presenting symptoms, a biophysical profile may be indicated. So what is the first component of these five tests? Um, I've already said it's the non-stress test. Uh, that's where you place monitors for the uterine contractivity and then the fetal heart rate and then uh, check that out. What you're looking for is a reactive test, meaning there's two or more accelerations in the fetal heart rate and the accelerations need to hit a certain benchmark um, if it's, but, but for those benchmarks, it's best to watch my uh, my non-stress test video, but over 20 minutes. If it's non-reactive, on the other hand, then uh, you're going to assign zero points. If it's reactive, you give two points. If it's non-reactive, you give zero. There is no one point that you'll assign. Another uh, measurement that you're going to be taking is the fetal breathing measurement. So this is where you need an episode of at least 20 or more seconds of rhythmic breathing and you're going to be monitoring that up to 30 minutes. Anything more than 30 minutes will be considered an abnormal, uh, abnormal test. So if you see an episode of 20 or more seconds where you see fetal rhythmic breathing, you'll assign it a value of two points, and if you don't, you assign it zero. Uh, the next will be fetal activity, so you'll need to see at least two episodes of torso or limb movement and then there's the scoring for that. Muscle tone. Uh, you'll need to look for at least one episode of bending, so the flexion uh, and extension of the limb uh, or trunk. So you need to look for extremity, extension, flexion, truncal, flexion, extension. You need to find one of those, and that'll indicate your muscle tone. And then lastly, you need a qualitative amniotic fluid volume or in, uh, amniotic fluid index, AFI or AFV, and for that, it's where you need to, to measure at least one uh, vertical pocket more than two centimeters um, or more in the vertical axis, and that'll give you two points. And then if you don't get it at least two centimeters, then it's zero points. So what does all this point stuff mean? Well, it's based out of 10. There's five parameters. Perfect score would be a 10 out of 10. Uh, the worst score would be a zero out of 10. So. 8 to 10 is best, um, typically reassuring of fetal well-being and acid-base status. Um, 6 to 8 range, um, and if, you're, if you do get a score of 6, you do need to consider induction of labor. Um, but that's only if the conditions are favorable, meaning you're 36 or more weeks of gestation and you have a normal fluid, uh, amniotic fluid index. Otherwise, you do need to repeat the testing within 24 hours. Um, if you have a score of 4, induction of labor is only recommended after 32 weeks. And then between a score of 0 and 2, uh, 
uh, induction immediately is recommended. Here's my work cited, um, also clinical experience. Otherwise, if you have any questions, comments, um, or if you liked the video, please subscribe. Thank you very much.